heading to the pawn shop. It's working. Deal with a lot of turnover. Also, in the airport, you just get them trained when all of a sudden you get avoid a lot of problems that way. But guess what? A lot of the wood in the new homes is green, and so you get the water out even faster. When the country show came on, uh, we would turn it off. And then I discovered that the stars of the country show, Arthur Smith and the Cracker Jacks, all lived in my neighborhood. We rode the same school bus. Some star, as far as I'm concerned, is Anderson Cooper these days. He has done a marvelous. Basically, show. that's the only time I saw my dad, because he commuted from Manhattan up to Katona on the train, and so he would leave before I woke up in the morning, and he'd get back around seven o'clock at night. Those were long days. Oh, yeah. But uh, he would come in, and I'd say good night, and we would listen to the answer man. And go, I would try it bigger. Spot, <laughs> <laughs> please. I remember the colored TV that we had initially off black and white. They had this thing you put over the, uh, a film you put over the front of the TV set. Mm -hmm. It blue at the top. Yeah, 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 I remember this. It, it was blue, and then it was green, and then it kind of a red thing. That was color TV, mm -hmm. because that's all there was. Race at Cocoa Beach. About 1962, before we went to the moon, obviously, several years later. And they had all the original seven astronauts in this race. They all had red Corvettes, and they raced on the beach. Well, that day, a couple of the guys decided that we, they were going to challenge the leading officer, so they, they raced them. And they raced them down the beach. It was a three-mile race going down the beach, and one of the younger officers beat him to the finish line. That officer never then was allowed to continue in the Apollo program. So I come back from lunch one day and we had a mannequin of the Colonel that we would use as kind of a set piece when we did production and someone had put the mannequin down in the waiting room of the TV station, you know, sitting in a chair. Okay, I said, what time are we doing the Harmon stuff today? I said, we're not. I said, yes we are. I said, the mannequin is down in the chair, down in the waiting room right now. He said, John, that's not the mannequin. That's Colonel Sanders. We're doing a feature piece on him. Okay, Walter Cronkite, when he came out of the war action in World War II and went into, he went into sports, he was a sportscaster first, a lousy sportscaster. I was in Germany with Robin Hood in 1969, on July 10th, I think it was, the date that we landed on the moon. We were sitting in the Black Forest. I'm listening to Armed Forces Radio and Television commentary of this. And we sat down on the moon. It's very late, and all of a sudden, all the lights in the cities and the towns and the you came on. The bells of the churches started to ring, and people were applauding and honking their horns. And I'll tell you, as an American, that was one of the greatest moments of my life to be in a foreign country to have such a great event occur. One more. He's trying to read the read the script of him, and he's looking at me. No, don't do it. Don't do it. So I go down, he just gives a little tick, 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 you know, and he starts, cr you know how you start cracking up? <laughs> yeah. And I go, it's just, he said cracking up, and I go, you know, it starts up, <laughs> and he just blew it. He fell under the desk. It was absolutely the greatest thing. It was my greatest moment of revenge I've ever had. <laughs> hung this stinking, rotten, maggot-infested cape on over the, over the lighting set on a string. And when I said to him, they say, "What? What's the weather going to be?" Say the magic word, the barrel come down and tell you the weather. And they dropped this cape on down, Jeez. and it fell apart. It was rancid. It was stinky, rotten thing. Fell all over the floor, and it's one of those moments that you go, "What do I do now?" You know, it's what do I do now. What, what do I do? I said, "Well, I said, well, we'll be back in a moment." I'll <laughs> <laughs> Flies are everywhere in, in those kinds of countries. They're insidious. Man. Had the mic open, a record ended, didn't have one queued up, reaching for a record, so I started talking about this fly making passes and coming in for a three point landing. And I slapped the console and I said, I just killed the Libya National Bird. And ten days later, I was in San Vito, Italy on the heel of the boot. Article 15, but a letter of reprimand and missed 
two cycles for staff. <laughs> wow. But survived. There you go. One slip of the tongue. Exactly. <laughs> Did you ever open the mic on anybody in hostility? <laughs> That's a hell of a question. Well, they asked if you shot anybody. You know, we didn't shoot anybody. No. <laughs> no. no, they didn't give us guns, and that's probably a good thing. You were spying on us, aren't you? I have any problems. Did you work at the station then? Yeah, I worked in downtown Saigon. I'm sorry. It, it is true. I don't want to start the only fight that we have during this reunion. This won't do. This won't do. an early adapter, though. 52. 52. Yeah, I thought I thought it was. I think Gar was about 57 or 8. I remember watching those debates on television. So, Jay, anybody that you didn't see here, you'd like to see at the next one, and is there anything you can tell to get him to come? Well, I miss Dean Inns. It was nice of him to write that note because uh, his sense of humor is missed a lot. Man. The other one that should have come is Jay Noble. <laughs> I'm Sandy Thompson. Okay. And, and who's your worse or half? Yeah. What's been the highlight of the trip so far? Yeah. It was renting a car at Dallas Airport. I still can't get over that. That's pretty sad. Yes, that was. <laughs> Jamie. And uh, who, who brought you to this dismal affair? Well, uh -huh. And what's been the highlight so far? Uh, it was you can't leave the store without paying for it first. <laughs> In the rack, the feedlot. At one point, I served as program director of AFTN in Tehran between, well, mostly 1969. And I spent two years, so 67, 68, here in Wichita Falls for SCTV. Broadcasting before they invented electrons. That's right. Actually, I started, uh, I was 13 years old when I started on oh, the air. Yeah. I built a radio station when I was 12. Here in Wichita Falls, we discovered that if God didn't want to drink, Hey Stork, does that story have a punchline? I've been rolling for 20 minutes. It, it is that my friends uh, gave me white lightning as the last drink of the evening after I paused while the final jam. Of all the people that you met here at the reunion and you knew before, which one has shocked you the most on how they've deteriorated? Oh, <laughs> oh wow. Here's your chance. You always wanted to. Come on. Oh, God. It'd have to be McLean. <laughs> Jeff McLean, I was at the Shepherd 67 through 68, 15 months. Uh, been a year in Thailand, Dubai, then TDY to Verrat, and finally PC to Verrat. Uh, thanks to Dick Stork, who got me out of purgatory in Dubai. Held hold for the next day and kept me. Uh, and probably the greatest year of my life. Okay, didn't realize it at the time. I was going to say, you don't feel it like you're very Well, it was. We had a good time. We had, there was a lot of talented guys over the yeah, four but, years or so. But you just can't think of any other names right now, right? No. I was the only one. <laughs> but uh, there, another had to be out <laughs> Dork <laughs> said that you uh, set fire to his... Uh... Oh, that's a very long story. Uh, I've told that so many times. So... You can tell that story. You told me. So you can tell it for posterity. I told you. It's a fire story. Sunday night about midnight, he calls Stork and wakes him out of bed. Said, Mr. Stork, this is so-and-so on the Wichita Falls Fire Department. We've got a tremendous grass fire in the studio here at KNTO out here. Radio Hill. He said, we need a representative from your radio station to show up. 
gonna claim this fire. So claim the fire? They have to sign out for it or anything? So Stuart Cosby's general manager, Flash owner, and they both show up at KNTO in the middle of the night. Like, as Stuart put it, the next morning he said, the only thing that broke fire was a, was a match that was lighting the cigarette. Mm -hmm. I'm really proud of myself. I said, well, guys, I gotta leave it with you. can't hang around, this is just stupid. So I gotta walk out left. And you know, within a month, every mother of them got punched. Two of them got punched. Two of them got punched. Watch wow. out. And I, I, heard, I heard that that was the last time you ever walked away from <laughs> stupid. <laughs> I came down to uh, Shepherd from uh, Chanute. I was with Field Dreams. And someone came in and tapped me on the shoulder, a major, and said, you know, What do you know about television? I said, Yes, I have one at home. <laughs> and uh, he said, Well, you're now branch chief of the television. I'm Leo Orgy. How I got here, uh, all of a sudden I became maintenance. Uh, I'm colorblind. I've got this bundle of wires I'm supposed to solder. Oh. So I had thank to God, you, thank God they didn't grab you on the bomb squad. Right. I, I was with the uh, SCTV for, uh, for 1961 to 1969. And you were the boss of a lot of these guys, right? You were the NCI. So of all these goofballs that are here tonight, which one was the biggest screw-up whenever you were working with them? Oh, now that's a hard question. <laughs> so have you had a good time at the reunion so far? I have. Have you? Would you come back to another one? Not that dumb. <laughs> We have to wait and see. Okay. My wife is Gayla, and we live in Fort Worth, Texas, and have lived there since 1982. We were members of the SETV crew into about April of 1967. Uh, John Alexander that tried to freeze himself to death in one of our 20 degrees, I think it was 20 degrees below zero, he got on a bathing suit and got a, uh, a lounge chair and went out and sat outside of our building in at least 20 degree below zero temperature. Say that John never recovered from that exposure incident. Oh, the exposure incident at Thule? No, I, well, I think he did, but I think it may have left him a little. <laughs> He's got an unfair advantage because he's in every damn picture, so everybody stays in touch with him. That's exactly right. Yeah, exactly. Me, like, the most embarrassing moment of your life. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, at least give you your, your first and last name so people when you will know. remember your name. Right, right, yeah. Jerry Walker. And? Frank Walker. And Frank, how do you come to be at this establishment this evening? Well, unfortunately or fortunately, I worked in the AFTN and SETV and uh, have a great association with a lot of neat people. Really? Yes. And they're here tonight? And most of them are here. <laughs> I've been at a different event. Yeah. <laughs> and one of my most embarrassing moments is right now. Uh, I served uh, here at Shepherd Air Force Base 66 to 68 and then uh, 68, 69 Thailand and back to Georgia Air Force Base. Identify yourself. Jim Burwell. Jim Burwell. Yes. Rank and serial number, please. Rank and serial number. Name, rank, and serial number. Don't have that. I don't have a rank anymore. Don't have a rank. But you're retired. You carry the big, the big ID. You can get in anywhere you want. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. I got an ID card. All right. Yeah. And where were you stationed? And what did you do? What years were you there? Well, uh, I, Not all. Just, just go. Just in the 1990s. <laughs> I had six. Don't go back to the beginning. I had seven overseas tours. <laughs> seven overseas tours? Yes. Holy cow. All mostly isolated. Wow. And you wouldn't even insure me. And where did you share the time with these people here tonight? I never saw them before. They, they, they <laughs> met them tonight. All right. Well, they seem to be tolerating you pretty well. AFRTS is a big outfit. Uh, I was pulled off the air in Saigon and told that I was editorializing on the air and I had to go to the uh, Really? Wow. 
That's right up there. Ralph Johnson. Go ahead. Are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. And this is before they've even served beverages. We're in trouble. What do you call that? Okay, one. It's an iced tea. It's not even a Long it, Island iced tea. It looks like it. Take two. Huh? Take two. Take two, okay. Thanks. What would you say to people that didn't come to get them to come next time? Oh, you missed that on Big Johnny. Wow. And this guy was on the air. He was trained at Shepherd. This is scary. This is real scary stuff. We'll be back after this background check. But I clearly remember you teaching us to block. Oh, blocking? Yeah. I figured I'd probably end up in Vietnam, but I went and got back right to Thailand. In fact, I, actually a friend of mine suggested, why don't you call Colonel Rector in the Pentagon? So I did, talk to him, and told him about my experience, and you know, I'd love to get back and do something in Thailand like I did before. So I did. That, uh, and, uh, that was in That would be late 67 and 68. Uh, and then from there, I uh, finished out uh, at Travis Air Force Base in Fairfield, California. And uh, overall, a mighty good experience. I love it. Because I did have guaranteed enlistment, but I've had many people tell me, oh, you fell for that trick? Yeah. So I didn't know for sure. But finally, uh, orders came after six weeks of painting rocks, and I went to Thailand. I went to Karat, Thailand, um, and was there and had the most amazing and wonderful experience that first year when they were really just building the network. The first. And that was 66 to 67. That's exactly right. Okay, yeah. and, then, and then what happened? Uh, I taught English uh, off base and uh, met crazy people like Jim Sissel. And are any of the people present tonight people that you would admit to knowing in a public place? Oh, yeah. I've been in many a sandbox with this guy named Jim Sissel. Uh -oh. uh, heading toward the corner of Decima, wondering where the hell we were going and how we were going to get back. Mm -hmm. It was fun. I might have to delete this later. <laughs> I always felt guilty because you knew more Thai language Jim Sissel than I did, and here I was doing the language lessons on the air, but that was a little embarrassing. Mm, but yeah, but most of my conversation centered around alcohol, I think. <laughs> That's the truth. Been there, done that. Steve Sills. Okay. I've known and? Jim since 1968. What, this is not about me. This is about the event. Don't tell oh, me this that. Is, tell me this is who you are and what kind of times you had. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, what do you want to know about? What do you want to, what do you want to tell? What What is extortion worthy? <laughs> not much. I've led a pretty pure, simple life. Oh. What, what does T-Lock mean to you inside? Los Angeles. What does T-Lock mean, Steve? T-Lock means sweet hot. Sweet hot. Yes. How would you know that? Um, because I've been married to my T-Lock for 38 years. Okay, that was a good cover. That was really great. Do you, wait a minute. Do you believe that? Do we believe this man? I do. I do. It's the truth. Okay. Every girl that worked downtown and not come had an identification card with a number on it. Okay. And every two weeks they had to go to the hospital to have a checkup. Oh. Oh. And then the hospital would call the radio station with a number of the girls that failed their checkup. You had to put it on the radio? We would broadcast it. Oh. It was on the radio. It was a public service. It was a public service announcement. Right. So when Jim and I got there, somebody would just open a mic and read off the numbers. 26, 192, 435. So we decided to spruce it up a bit. And we would do little skits and play songs like you only hurt the one you love. Or it only hurts for a little while. We would, we would kind of make it a little more interesting than it was before. So, but it seemed to me that... Oh the further you got away from payday, the longer the list got. <laughs> there <laughs> was a, the, the there girls, was a car like The girls didn't have the money to pay off the doctors to get the. Oh. Now the last story about that is, the guys were supposed to listen to the radio, write down the numbers, go downtown, meet a nice girl, ask for her ID card, and check it against the list. It's called number. comparison shopping. It didn't happen. That way. <laughs> they would go downtown, get drunk, meet a girl. And when they were done, they'd ask for the ID card to come back. That's to the other station. other guys. Guys, you're not talking, not, not AFTN us. personnel. Not Come back to the station and say, to what about radio. number 936? And I would say, get to the hospital and meet you. <laughs> I remember I was 19 years old, a single man, 
Is this going to be in the depositions? No, no. Uh, she was a very lovely girl. And um, three weeks after we broke up, she came up on the hospital list. What number? You gave her some kind of she disease? 1247. No, no, no. With a bullet. Weren't you supposed to listen to the station to find that stuff out in advance? That was the gal that rolled over the car. Uh, no, no, no. Little kid walks into a to an ice cream store and he's wearing his cowboy hat and his six guns in his boots. And he walks up to the counter and he goes, Give me an ice cream soda. And the young lady behind the counter says, What kind of ice cream would you like? And the kid goes, Chocolate. You want nuts? Sure. You want your nuts crushed? You want your tits blown off? Thank you. I'll be here all night. My mother's working down in New York uh, doing books for some uh, nonprofit. And somebody knows somebody who's in Bangkok. So they get the address and they have a phone number. They have live in Bangkok. Yeah. I worked in Bangkok. So they have me look them up. So I, I get there. I can't remember. It couldn't have been the first day. So I was down in Bangkok for some reason. I called this guy. And he goes, okay, I'll meet you at the hotel if you have this for that. I meet him. He says, hi, nice to meet you. He takes me to his orange parlor and disappears. That was it. So my mom helped, uh, you know, helped me get oriented. <laughs> so to speak. So to speak. <laughs> <laughs> you know that, another question. How much of you had the drink? The problem is someone's videoing this. <laughs> this is AFDN, Channel 74 and 80. Okay. Bert this, Burnett, Wichita this Falls, is Karat, and Dakar Rajasima. Which means correct. Right. 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 It's the news. <laughs> <laughs> the dog's name was Dammit. You can get drugs from the VA. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be generic, but they're drugs. <laughs> the woman came here, this is the truth. Okay. How do you want to they don't have, they were out of jalapenos. Alright, here we are trying the famous Rocky Mountain oysters, aka half fried. And Steve is paying for this if I eat all of them. Yes, sir. Okay, here goes. Now, don't they even have any sauce to put on or anything? Well, here, try that. I think this is. Your and what do they taste like? <laughs> Chicken? <laughs> but my voice got much deeper. <laughs> <laughs> Lead in the pencil. <laughs> Highly recommend it. Okay, all right. One time. Okay, all right. One time and ask me how I'm going to leave How do we know you're going to be here? Maybe you're going to go on the bigger and better. You know what? They can call me and I will come back. What if you decide to go to Dallas or New York or Paris? What if you get on American Idol? Shoot, I can't sing. You should get me in here sometime. I can't even sing on the radio. We'll look for you. Okay, sure. Well, you guys have a good night. Thank you. Here I am at the uh, Cracker Barrel in Wichita Falls, Texas. Came all the way from LA. I'm on a mission to visit every Cracker Barrel in the United States. And what is so it? So people go to the ball fields. I go to the Cracker Barrel. That's it. And and what makes the Cracker Barrel so close to your heart? Um, the snuff. Snuff? Yes. They sell snuff. Yes. And the largest Tootsie Rolls in America. Oh, that is a, the best van of white I've seen in a long time. Here's your radio voice. I'd like to do a voice. <laughs> it's as if it's made with milk. <laughs> <laughs>